if Sam Darnold most likely is coming to the Niners, where's Jimmy Garoppolo going? Is he going to be the starter and Sam Darnold's going to be the backup? Or what do you think happens here most likely? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they can do that, right? You can't bring in Sam Darnold and keep him as your backup because you only have one year with him. So yeah. he has to play. He has to play. Right. Regardless of how he looks, he has to get on the field. Because the Niners, this isn't Kyle Shanahan's first year where he can afford to sit Sam Darnold. Kyle Shanahan also has to make the playoffs this year. So Sam Darnold has to get on the field. There's no way that's happening. What? So then I think the only thing that makes sense now is Jimmy Garoppolo goes back to the Patriots. And the question is, how does he go back to the Patriots? Do they trade for him? Do they wait for the Niners to cut him and then get him? I think the one thing, and you came on my show on uh, Sunday, me and Blake, Blake and I's show, Blake and Bush Sports, by the way, subscribe if you haven't. But um, you came on our show. We did this exact same topic. And I told you, I don't, the only thing I'm confident about is that if Jimmy Garoppolo goes back to the Patriots, it won't be for dead money of $25 million. Like, I think that his cap hit for this year, they will reduce it, whether they give him the extension or they restructure I think they him would. somehow. I think they would. Yeah. yeah. So they like he's not gonna, yeah. yeah. So he's not going to be a $25 million cap hit, which for them then is a huge bargain because they have a ton of cap space. They're getting a ton of people back and they get Jimmy Garoppolo on a lessened cap hit. So to me, Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Then, yeah, would they trade him back? Yeah, I 100% believe they trade him back. I think that's the best case scenario for Jimmy Garoppolo's career at this point. I think it's the best case scenario for New England with what they're building. I, I told you, I think New England's a sleeping giant for next year with their power run game and their defense next year. So I think they're going to be a sleeping giant regardless of who's at quarterback. And I think that makes sense. I think they might be able to instill more confidence into Jimmy in terms of protecting himself and getting him back because he didn't have a good season when he played the Arizona game. He looked shot short of confidence. Then the Jets game, he yeah, hurt his man. ankle. He hurt his ankle early, and we thought he was confident, but then he didn't return. Then the Miami game was awful. The Rams game, a couple, almost he was like 50-50 on any throw past the line of scrimmage. Um, the Patriots the game, game, a little better, but there were a couple uh, weird throws. The interception. Then the Seattle, yeah, then the, the Seattle game came back to going rough. So, so he's been kind of, he had a really all over the place, kind of really poor season overall. And I think that he needs to go back to that place where he's com comfortable and maybe they can get back going with him. And yeah, so I think if the seems Niners, obvious. Sam Darnold, this, this seems obvious, right? This seems like a no brain. So the Niners, if they were to get Sam Darnold, you think it would be like <clears throat> on day one or day two of the draft, something like that. Like after, after the Jets take, Whoever, whichever, say the Jets. Yeah, take that's Zach what Wilson I think. That's, it'll be exactly Jets take how Zach Josh Wilson. Rosen was. It will. It'll be day two. Exactly the same way Josh Rosen was traded for pick forty-eight. So they took Kyler Murray, right? They took Kyler Murray. Josh Rosen was on the roster Thursday night. Friday they traded him uh, to the Dolphins because the other thing was, if you remember in that draft, Schefter was basically reporting that there were three teams interested. It was the Chargers, the Miami Dolphins, and the New York Giants. And basically, the Chargers and the Miami Dolphins were just waiting to see how the quarterback, and all three of those teams were just waiting to see how the quarterbacks in the 2019 draft fell. And then they were going to make a move on whether they wanted to pull the trigger on Rosen or not. I think it's going to be the sim. It's going to be a similar thing with Darnold. Yep, yeah, uh, I can see that. So the Niners, let's say uh, they get Darnold on day two. They trade Jimmy Garoppolo to the Patriots on day two for what? See, that's the thing. If you wait until day two to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, would you trade for a pick next year, like a conditional pick that maybe could become a first-round pick if they go to the playoffs or something like that? And he plays X amount of games. Could you I do mean, that? The way, that's what the, that's way, what the Wentz so, feels so, like. so the way I, – I mean, I think it's going to be something like that. But I've told you, to me, Ryan Tannehill from the Miami Dolphins to the Tennessee Titans is the deal to look at. I think it ended up being a fourth and a seventh. So off the okay. top of my head okay. – Someone correct me if I'm wrong. It ended up being a fourth and a seventh for Ryan Tannehill and then a full restructure. So he was scheduled to make like $18.5 million his final year. I think they made it a one-year $7 million deal. Miami paid $5 million and Tennessee paid just $2 million. I don't think that same structure in terms of the restructure is going to happen. I think New England has the cap to take whatever they wanted Jimmy Garoppolo's contract and the Niners can't afford to do a contract like that. But I think fourth, seventh, something like that. If you remember, Tannehill was also two years removed from his ACL. Tannehill mm -hmm. was also lacking in confidence after he came mm -hmm. back from his ACL. 
Now, the difference was Tannehill had a lot more starts in, uh, behind him when he left Miami. But he and was not also, the success that, that Jimmy Garoppolo had. Right, Jimmy Garoppolo has great this. numbers and a great winning percentage and a Super Bowl appearance. And he's go- potentially going back to the place that developed him and liked him supposedly very much. Right, and I also think Tannehill had a little more, has a little more just juice physically. He, I mean, he was a receiver in college, so he's a good athlete, and he has a good stronger point. arm than Jimmy. So I think those are two things to look at. But overall, I think that's that's what you got to be looking for. I think that's the president, right? He was the original Texas A and M stud stud quarterback, the original Kellen Mond. You know, maybe that's my comparison for Kellen Mond. Ryan Tannehill. I just it's got not it. a bad one. It's not Boom. a bad one. It's I, not a I bad one. I see Alex Smith, right? And I think yeah, Ryan Tannehill about the same is size. Like, Six four. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I like it. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to ask you about Jimmy? And no, let's move on. Uh, this whole Sam Darnold thing is kind of depressing me. So let's let's move on because here's the way I look at the Sam Darnold thing. It seems the Niners. You can't just have one plan. You got to have backup plans. Maybe there's a quarterback they really like in the draft, but you can't guarantee that you're going to get him. So if they don't get whichever quarterback they like, maybe they feel like, well, we can, you know, we can always get Sam Darnold. That's plan B. So I'm, for the Niners' sake, hoping that Sam Darnold is like a plan B option, but there's some quarterback at 12, at 43, or somewhere in between that they like and they're, they feel like they can make a play for if things break the right way. So let's just say that's true. So one more thing on the Darnold that I didn't add in the beginning. You asked me how I was able to guess it, too. So a lot of Cowherd clips have been circulating through 49ers Twitter, various people tweeting a bunch of things Cowherd has said, like the fact that Jimmy Garoppolo had a chance to play at the end of last season, and he heard that he sat out and those kinds of things. But one of the things he said when he was talking about Sam Darnold in one of those clips, I forgot who posted it, was that he knows for a fact John Lynch likes Sam Darnold. Well, how do you think Colin Cowherd knows that? John Lynch was used to work where before he was a 49ers uh, front Fox. office executive. Fox, Colin Cowherd works where? Fox. So obviously it makes sense. Like it seems John Lynch also is very open with telling you how he feels about players pre-draft. I mean, the 2018 draft, he said, Sony Michelle, Derwin James, Mike McGlinchey, three most impressive players I've seen. Last year, yeah. he said C.D. Lamb and Brandon Ayuk were the two best receivers on their board. He said that Miles Garrett, Solomon Thomas, and Reuben Foster were their three best players in the draft in 2017. He so he's openly shared information like this constantly. And it seems that I think he's the one that's been saying that, you know, he loves Sam Darnold. And I think that's why a lot of those national reporters like Albert Breer, I think his connection is John Lynch, I want to say. Peter King, we know for a fact he's connected to both, but John Lynch, too. And, uh. Colin Cowherd connected to John Lynch as well. Okay, good to, good to know. And before we get into this topic, real quick for Sonny, are you aware of any quarterbacks in the 2022 draft who are um, serious prospects? I'm sure somebody kid, will come up. Yeah. Isn't the kid from Oklahoma good? Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler. I mean, he's yeah. got a hose. He can he's throw it. He's got a hose. It. He's athletic. But I, think he's, I think he's like 6'1", 2". Oh, okay. I think he's like – I think he's like if you have problems with he's like Zach Tua? Wilson – He's like okay. a bootleg version of Zach Wilson. I oh, think okay, the okay. I've seen. I only I've saw seen. him when he was just destroying Florida that day. I was like, "Well, this guy's probably." But I haven't watched I him have, that closely. I haven't watched him closely enough. This is just like, a kid I've from seen Cincinnati. One game on TV that I threw out there. I've seen the kid um, from Cincinnati. Cincinnati, who's that? Oh, Ritter. Ritter. Yeah, Ritter's got talent. Ritter got could talent. be a guy that could be. I mean, he's got talent to be a first round, first round player because. He can really – he's got a really big arm, and he can run. I'm glad he went back to school. Um, Sonny, I, I'm trying here. You get very generous. I appreciate you. I don't – I haven't looked that far ahead. Well, okay, The tw- this draft was always supposed to be a big-time quarterback draft, even before Zach Wilson showed up on the scene, even before Mac Jones became a big deal. People were pretty darn convinced that Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, three special people. Yeah, Sam Howell, the UNC yeah. guy. I don't know if he's that good. I mean, what about I, the kid I, from he, Arizona State? I remember watching him a lot when I was oh, scouting Jayden Brandon Daniels? Ayuk. Jaden yeah, Daniels. Did he, did he not have a good year this year? So, I, I have zero. Clue. Was he a I Brandon Ayuk game of, I didn't watch a been, game of okay. Arizona State uh-huh. this year. I do remember being very pretty frustrated with him when I was like trying to watch like Brandon Ayuk. Like I felt like. He, he he hurt Brandon Ayuk's stats on a few throws where he would just leave it behind. He him wouldn't want that. He had yeah. terrible field vision. It's like, dude, where are you looking? That guy is open all the time. What are you doing? He's like, 
we're gonna it's like nah man come on anyway so yeah good question terrible answer sorry i'll get back to you